Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to class. So happy that you're here again. And yes, this space looks probably familiar to a lot of you, especially those that have been practicing with me for a couple of years. This is where I filmed, I think, Yoga for Men episode two. Yes, I think it was episode two. In this space, which is my home gym in San Jose, California, Gorilla Jiu-Jitsu, where I trained Jiu-Jitsu most of my Jiu-Jitsu uh, career and Jiu-Jitsu time. So it's great to be back for a quick visit. So I wanted to take the opportunity to provide a kind of new class for you today. Today is going to be a new format. We will do first a movement practice and then we will finish with some breath work. More of a yang flow with some crescent lunges, warrior three, side plank, chaturanga holds. You know I love those. I know you too. And then we will finish with some breath work. So if you're ready for something energizing, but of course grounding, because that's kind of just how I teach, let's get started. Let's begin in a child's pose today. Come on to the knees if you're not already. Feet together, knees apart. Let the upper, upper body melt down, hands forward, just for a moment to arrive. Take a few deep breaths to settle in, get ready for the practice, let the hips be heavy. Relax your forehead down to the mat, I'll just keep mine lifted so the audio sounds better. Close your eyes for a moment and know that the this practice now, the next 30 minutes or so, is just for you. Whatever you had going on today, whatever your plans are, it can wait. Put it aside. It's important to make space and take the time each day to breathe, to move, to do something for you, to do something very different than you would usually do or do throughout the day. It's also important to take the time to play and just be free, have fun. So with that, I invite you to add and modify this practice. We're going to keep it super simple today in our movement part of the class. So if you want to add something in, feel free to do so. Play around, try something new, have some fun. Play, that's, that's the big word. And if you want to leave something out or modify even more than do that, you can bring it up or bring the practice down. Let's come into a tabletop. Come onto the toes, slide the hands back, quick wrist warm up. So just lean back and forward with the arms straight. A couple of times, really feel into the wrists, feel into the toes. It's also my first practice of the day today, so this feels super nice for me too. And since I do all of this stuff with you, sometimes it's, it's hard to just keep going because I want to keep the class short and I just enjoy myself so much and uh, just stay in the poses and would love to just keep flowing. Internally rotate the hands, but then I remind myself that this is not for me, this is not my practice, this is just... Uh, me sharing my practice with you and to provide you all the tools to live a better life. Externally rotate the hands, just five of these forward and back. Really feel into the wrist, strong sensation there, but nothing painful, no sharp pain. Very good. Fingertips pointing outwards, lean side to side. Very good, now the fingertips are pointing back. I always kind of do the same wrist warm-up. I keep it simple. This this one I just find is very effective. It just does the most for me, for my body and for my wrists to prepare for the practice. And I've tried like many different uh, wrist warm-ups and exercises throughout the years. And it also keeps changing, so future videos will maybe have something different. Right now at least this is the best for me. 
and hopefully it feels good for you too. Sit on the heels, shake out the hands. Very good. And let's come into a tabletop again. This time, untuck the toes, reach your right arm forward and the left leg back for spine balancing. Try to lift and reach at the same time. So the right hand and the left leg lift and reach at the same time. You can flex or point the left foot, draw the belly in, lift your left leg higher up, lift your right arm higher up, the right thumb is pointing upwards, keep the breath going. One last deep breath in, exhale, release down, very good, other side, when you're ready, left arm forward, right leg back. Like I said, we're keeping it super simple today, so no funky transitions today in this practice, just pretty basic, at least for us or for me, for my teaching style, this is super basic. Last deep breath in. Exhale, left hand down, right knee down. Very good. Step the feet back for plank pose. Tuck your tailbone, engage the core. Shift forward, come high into the toes, and shift back. Shift forward and back. Let's do three more. Keep the tailbone tucked, the core strong, push the ground away, last one. Very good, move the hips up and back for downward facing dog. Take your time to arrive, walk your dog, pedal one heel down or rotate the heels. Whatever you need to do for the next three breaths, just arrive. There's no rush going through downward dog or going through this practice especially the first downward facing dog, I really like to take my time to arrive and feel the body kind of scanning and checking in how, how am I doing today. And that will usually determine the intensity of the practice. Keep moving, whatever feels good, set up the breath. Ujjayi, nice and slow through the nose. Push the ground away, firm into the inner hands. Let's release the forearms down for dolphin pose. Nice opening for the shoulders. Also, we're activating our lats. Very nice. Push the chest towards the thighs. Keep the legs straight if you can. The heels are lifted. But of course, if you cannot keep the legs straight, then just bend them. Just focus on moving the chest towards the thighs, open the shoulders. At the same time, push the ground away so that this is nice and active and you're not just dumping all the weight into the shoulders. Very good. Now look forward towards the fingertips. Let's shift forward, lift both elbows up at the same time, straight to Chaturanga. Elbows in, hold for five, four, three, shift more forward, two, one, plank, downward facing dog. Very good, lift your right leg up and back, three-legged dog. Keep firming into the inner hands, push the ground away. Draw the navel in. Deep breath in, come high into your left toes. Exhale, right knee to the chest, round your back, shoulders over wrists, push the ground away. Flex your right foot, step the foot between the hands, rise up for crescent lunge on your inhale. Draw the navel in, so we're not coming into a back bend. Send the hips forward. Bring your hands to the heart. Let's transition to a warrior three. Bring 
between the upper body and the left leg parallel to the ground if you can reach back through the left leg reach forward through the spine at the same time lower the left hip more down press into your palms that helps with your balance last deep breath in exhale step the left foot back skandasana to the left bend your left knee straighten the right take a moment here to perhaps let the ankle open up the groin the inner thighs move to the front of the mat side plank on the left hand Lift your left hip higher up, engage the glutes. On your exhale, right hand down as well, plank pose. Squeeze the hands together to activate your pecs and your chest muscles, also the inner arm lines, the front arm lines. Start to shift forward. Come higher to the toes, Chaturanga. Hold for five, four, elbows in, three, two, one and a half, one, plank, push up, and shift forward, lower all the way down. Very good. Untuck the toes, and then start to lift only the chest up. Keep the feet on the ground, and lower for 10, nine, eight, seven, lower and lift, six, five, squeeze the shoulder blades together, four, engage your glutes, three, two, <coughs> one, hold, five, four, three, you got this, two, one, release down. Very good, check out the hips. You can transition however you would like to downward facing dog. I'm gonna go into an upward facing dog and then to downward dog. If you are choosing upward dog, engage the glutes, broaden the collarbones, last deep breath in, exhale downward dog. Lift your left leg up and back, three legged dog. Move the chest towards the thighs. Lengthen with the right heel down towards the mat. Move the chest towards the thighs, towards the right thigh. Take a deep breath in, come high into your right toes. Exhale, left knee to the chest. Hold, deep breath in. Exhale, crescent lunge. Left foot between the hands. On your inhale, you rise up. Slow the breath down, nice and controlled, deep ujjayi breathing. Tuck the tailbone. Reach the arms back towards the ears and up. Hands to the heart. Shift forward, warrior three. The right leg floats up. Squeeze your palms together, lower the right hip down. Really feel the energy lengthening forward through the spine and back through the right leg. Last deep breath in. Exhale, Skandasana to the right, step the right foot back. Hang out here for a moment. Keep the left, the left toes flexed, pointing towards you. Move to the front of the mat for side plank on the right hand. Lift your right hip up, press into your right palm. Reach the left fingertips up towards the ceiling. Last deep breath in, exhale, plank pose, left hand down, 
clean it up. Make it strong, tuck your tailbone, engage the core. Keep holding here. Set the knees down, of course, if you have to, but before you do that, ask yourself, are you doing your best? Am I right now doing my best, or am I just lazy and I don't want to push myself? If that's happening and the body is yelling at you and it's so hard, it is very safe to stay here. It's a strong strength building, strength building pose. We're not going deep into any range of motion or flexibility. So come back to the breath. Keep breathing through it. You got it. Last 10 seconds. Nine, eight. Slow with the breath. Control, deep, ujjayi. It's all about the breath. That's quieting down the voice in your head. Shift forward, come high into the toes. Inhale, exhale, chaturanga, elbows in, hold for 10, 9, shift forward, 8, 7, 6, 5, shift more forward, elbows in, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, plank, knees down, elbows down, glide forward and through for upward facing dog. Engage your glutes, bring the feet as wide apart as the mat. Really important to create space for the back bend in your sacrum. Keep the core strong. Although you are lengthening the front side, last deep breath in, exhale downward dog. Beautiful job. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Open mouth, let it go. Two more just like that on your own. Very good, release the knees down. Sit down with your hips. You're gonna rotate sideways, but you can go however way feels good. We're coming into a seated straddle forward fold. Bring the legs wide apart and then walk the hands forward. We're here for about 10 breaths. So a little bit longer, a little bit different of a yin finish today. Keep the feet engaged, the toes reaching towards you. And maybe you missed it in the previous videos. I see in the comments all the time, oh, I'm nowhere close to this forward fold, or I cannot fold forward at all. My back is stiff like a board. It doesn't look like you do it here. It doesn't look a certain way. And I think I, I talk about it almost in every class. It really doesn't matter how it looks. We really need to get this idea out of our head that movement has to look a certain way. This is not circus. This is not a performance. It is not a dance stage performance where it needs to look a certain way. This is yoga. This is the practice that helps you rem to remember who you are and that you are whole. It is the practice of going deep into your heart. And movement, as we did today in this class so far, is one part of yoga, just a small part. And that part is very beneficial for your body, of course. Keeps you healthy, strong, mobile. It's very healthy for your cells. In fact, it's affecting your DNA as well. There's more and more research coming out on the effects of a mindful movement practice. Tremendous effects on the body and your being and your consciousness. It's amazing. So it doesn't matter if you can fold down or not. If you feel a sensation in your body, 
maybe in your back in this case, in this pose, or in your in your groin, in your inner thighs. That's fine. We're all, we're all looking just for the sensation. Some of us basically stay mostly upright to feel the sensation, and some of us have need to bring the chest to the floor to feel the sensation. But not it's not that one or the other is better. We're all just looking for the same thing, the sensation, and then using the breath to really dive into the body, melt into the body, and go deeper into the heart, and the breath is our guide. Last couple of breaths in silence. There was a lot of talking, I know. Use your hands to push yourself back up. The heart rate should now be at a comfortable level, hopefully. So it's nice to finish with a long stretch to slow down. Use your hands, grab underneath your knees to help bend the legs, shake out the legs. It's good to shake out the, the part that you stretched because with the stretch basically uh, it's squeezing out the synovial fluid, synovial fluid out of your joints. And then uh, by shaking and kind of throwing away your leg, imagine you want to kick and throw away your leg, you bring that uh, synovial fluid back into the joint and that is what makes it so healthy to squeeze it out and bring it back in like a sponge. So that's why we do this. Find a comfortable seated position. Like I said earlier, short movement practice and then some breath work. I'm not going to go into too much detail with the breath work. Today we're going to practice Kapalbhati, the breath of fire. There's a whole tutorial on that particular breath work. Really nice energizing and cleansing breathing exercise. One of my favorites I like to do because my energy is very grounding. And if I'm not active, then it, it turns into kind of laziness and heaviness. So I like to stay active to balance my being and bring my being to an optimal state as well as my body. And so I like uh, grounding but energizing practices like the ones I'm sharing with you as well as uh, the uh, breathwork practice that's energizing but grounding. We're doing 36 breaths and then we're doing three rounds. So it equals 108. And really quick, you exhale almost all the air out with your nose. You keep the mouth closed the whole time. And you forcefully push the air out. And then it comes back in and you push it back out. So it sounds like this. And we're doing 36 of those. And then times three. So whenever you're ready, let's get started. I'm not counting or not queuing anything. Let's do the first round. Take a few deep breaths through the nose in between. And then let's go into the second round whenever you're ready and you're just counting on your own in your head. Now second round whenever you're ready. Few breaths, deep breaths through the nose. You can keep your eyes closed if you want. If 
you start to feel any tingling sensation or a little bit lightheadedness or somehow energy rising up, it's totally normal. It's the effects of the breath work and it's showing you that it works. Last round, 36 breaths of Kapalbhati, whenever you're ready. Again, a few deep breaths, lengthen out through the spine, keep the eyes closed. We're doing one more breathing exercise today to finish up the practice. You will then just finish in a seated position or you can come onto your back later on to finish in Shavasana. We will conclude the practice today with Nadi Shodhana, alternating nostril breathing where we use our right thumb and our right ring finger to close the right nostril or the left nostril. Let's exhale all the air out. Close the right nostril. Inhale through the left nostril. Close the left side. Open the right. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close the right nostril, exhale through the left. That is one round, keep going, inhale through the left. Just a normal breath without controlling it, without changing it. Close the left nostril, open the right, exhale through the right side. Same side, inhale on the right nostril. At the top you switch, close the right, exhale through the left. That's round two complete. Let's do five more rounds on your own. Remember to sit tall. Relax your shoulders down, away from the ears. Three more rounds, at least for me. Deep breaths into the belly. Last round. Very good. Keep your eyes closed, sit tall, relax your hands down to the knees, maybe roll the shoulders a little bit forward and up, back and down, and then back and up, forward and down, sit tall.
observe the flow of the air coming in and out through the nose. Notice how you're breathing deeper into the belly. You're breathing a little bit slower, deeper, with more awareness and control. Continue observing the breath. When you start to get distracted or notice that you got distracted, then redirect your attention to the breath. And oftentimes we do that over and over again throughout the practice. Feel free to Continue the practice, continue sitting here, observe the breath, continue with your meditation, or transition onto your back and finish up in Shavasana. Thank you very much for practicing with me today, and I'll see you in the next video tomorrow. Love and gratitude. Namaste.